I am over here with Rick Lobdell, and we're now just chilling out on his almost finished uh, slab over here. <laughs> <laughs> as finished as I as could be. As finished as he can be for right now. And uh, so Rick, man, I gotta ask you, you've been, you have been here from the beginning. You were at the very first Decorative Concrete Expo, and you've been to everyone since. So just tell me what you thought about this year's show compared to years past. Well, uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here every year. I mean, it, you guys treat me so nice, always respect the hell out of me. I, I kind of don't, I almost sometimes feel like I don't deserve it. And I, I just appreciate it, I love it. Um, I can't get enough of it. I wish we had another day. And it's just one of those shows where it doesn't matter, every time I'm here, there's just so much going on. It's different each year for me. You get to do different designs each year. It's, it's always, what can we do next? How can we get creative with what we're doing now? How can we show people more things? And, and it's never the same same thing over and over and over. And that's the exciting thing about it. The people that come here have never seen anything like what I do. Their reactions are amazing. I, I just can't say enough about how much fun this place is every year. So one of the things I always love this is to see what Rick is gonna come up with this year, because you know, it, it's one of the coolest things, you know, some guys, you just, they just do the same thing year after year after year. Um, obviously you are not like that. And, <laughs> it never uh, will be. So just tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind this piece, because this is just, again, you've, you've done everything from murals to you've done stuff with the acid stain and engraving exterior before, we've done stuff interior engraving, and just tell me how you came up with this whole thing. This slab right here is my bread and butter. This is what I, the kind of work that I do. It was so much fun to get back into that and, and be able to, you know, not sit on the ground for an entire, for two days, because it does get grueling to do a mural on the floor compared to this. Everybody thinks, oh my God, this has got to be so much work. But you know, as well as I do, how fast I am and how quick I can do these things. So I wanted to see how far I could stretch it this year and take it another step of 3D. One of the great things about coming here too is that you guys don't go, well, this is what I want you to do. This is what I'm expecting you to do. It is, here's your slab, what do you want to do? And I get to be an artist and show off a little bit more on something that I've thought about trying to do. I've done 3D tile patterns before, but not to this level. And so it's always that fun to take it that one step further. Where can I come up with it? So on this one, I did a ton of research on 3D tiles. And one of the things we've talked about before too is I always focus on the medallion. You know, I always make these really elaborate medallions maybe, but then I don't do much in the background because it's gonna be too busy, it's gonna be overwhelming. I thought this time, let's do the reverse. Let's make this awesome background and let's calm down the medallion a little bit and have a little bit more fun with it and not make it so overwhelming that it kind of like disappears into it because it just becomes too busy. And honestly, this is one of my favorite medallions that you've done here. I, I love this style of cross right here. And you got to tell me these are crop circles, right? Of I mean, course. they've got to be crop circles. You know, I, I love that running joke between the two of us. I, it's so funny that I came in one day with a $10 book and I was like, yeah, I did this job once where I made all this money off of it. And you're like, what? Wait, crop, wait stop. I don't care about the job. I want to talk about crop circles. I'm like, what? Who cares about crop circles? I just bought it for medallions. I've never even read the book. He's read the book. That's, he bought the book the next day and he's been reading it. And it's just so funny. So um, as far as the materials, um, you tell me what you use this week. So we use your brand new line of acid stains, which I think went very well. Um, I only used probably like five different colors, but I, I made variations, especially on the background. I did three variations of, of your uh, antique bronze, first of all. And then I added weathered oak because I thought it was a good combination with them. It's, some people may even not notice that there's a slight change in the color because of it, but I did that on purpose to show how, how cool you can make a change in some of the colors. And then in the middle, I used your uh, Harvest Gold, I think it is, and, and Tiger Eye. And Tiger Eye is a brand new one that I've never seen before. And I was talking to Jason about it, I was like, you know, that would be a good contrast with the Harvest Gold. And then the last thing I thought about while I was actually on this one drawing it live um, the, the, yesterday, I thought, what border color should I do? You know, I always do a really dark border. And I thought, well, if I do a dark border, it might match too much into what's going on in the background. But the Harvest Gold would be a nice compliment to do it on the outside and the inside and bring it all to one level together. So I thought, hey, how clever would that be? How often do you see a light border? Usually we always do dark borders to frame it all in. And I thought, how cool would it be if I could go lighter on the border, especially since I didn't have to stay, spray anything. I hand brushed all of this. Um, because it was small enough design or small enough tiles, it was much easier to just paint by number once I cut it. I'm always worried about that if I'm spraying my stain and doing a lighter border because you're gonna overspray it and, and it's always a scary thing to do. But when you're hand brushing the whole thing, it was a perfect time to do it. 
Awesome, man. Um, so it looks like we just have maybe a little bit of cutting left to do and then a coat of sealer. You're and, cut and, that and last line, done. aren't you? Yeah, I think we're going to have I knew you were going to say that. that. Don't worry, we'll seal it for you on Monday. We'll seal it on Monday for you. But that's the cool thing is this entire slab really requires two products, acid stain and sealer, and, and, and that's it. And we got to wash this off yet yeah, before we Right, we, we but I mean, but you think about stuff. you think about the, the money involved with a project like this. If you were to do this live on a job site and I used three, four different colors of acid stain, but I wouldn't even have used a half a bottle of each one, not even close. I mean, I literally used probably 20 ounces of, of most of the colors at the most because I diluted them and everything. And then a five gallon bucket of sealer. I mean, how much cheaper material wise can you make an amazing design like this? And that's what I love you know, when we're doing our training classes. I love showing people this job cost me nothing to do. And look how amazing it is. And it's all profit. That's good stuff, man. Great job this week. As always, love having you here. Safe trip home, man, and I cannot wait until next year. Thanks very much, buddy. It's good to see you again. You bet, man.